You guys, I'm so excited. <laughs> We're gonna look at different pointu factories around the world. <laughs> I think I've visited two point you factories in my life and honestly, I wanna to go to all of them. It never gets old. It is magical and no matter how long I've been in this industry, it will never not be magical. I'm so excited. Let's start with Gaynor Minden. You know that Gaynor Minden used to be in the United States and after the pandemic, they moved to Europe. So I think this is the European factory. I have not seen this video before, but everything Gaynor Minden does, it's kind of excellent in every way. So ready for this tour. Okay, so this is the shank, the bottom of the shoe, and the satin. Okay, so these are like different parts of the point shoe. Gaynor Minden obviously has a different type of material than all of the other point shoes. They're using poron, they're using polymer, they're using more synthetic materials, which makes the shoes last a lot longer, but it looks really different than other point shoe making methods. Oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous can see that the stitching is going on, the heel seam. This satin is a lot stiffer than other point shoes. Other point shoe companies, they use a softer satin. This one's a little bit more stiff so that it doesn't wrinkle as easily. So this is a European factory, but it's making the point shoe the same way that they did in the United States. Most point shoes are made out of glue and paper and leather. This is made out of synthetic materials and they only use a little bit of glue just to keep the point shoe together, but not really to harden the shoe itself. So it's really different, but oh, look how pretty. I will say like when I'm doing point shoe fittings though, they put all this stuff inside the shoe to keep the point shoe shape. It is like so annoying to take everything out to do the point shoe fitting and then put it all back in. <laughs> Designed in New York, handmade in Europe since 1993. I feel like it's not that old. It's still traditionally made in the sense that a lot of it is handmade. However, the materials are a little bit different than other point shoe companies that we'll see. How point shoes are made, Royal Ballet Dancers visit the Freed Factory. Okay, so this is obviously in Europe. This is much more traditional. I think this is Crown Maker. But you can see that the point shoes are made on top of what's called a last. Oh, I've seen this one. I start fitting them when they're at the Royal Ballet School. And this is the first time they've ever been here. Yeah. So you can see all the satin lined up. So yeah, the crown, the little stamp that you just saw, that's a maker stamp. A lot of the makers, they have their own stamp. They put their stamp on the shoe so you know who made your shoes. They themselves. So those are pleats. When you're using the traditional turn shoe method, which means that the shoe is made inside out and then turned around, you'll see the little pleats on the bottom. And that's how most traditional point shoes are made of. Each maker's different, like they've got their own very bits and pieces what they do to the shoe. And that's when the dancer finds them. Because you don't go looking out for the dancers, they come and find you. I think this is Crown Maker and He's pretty popular amongst professional dancers. That's it, then the majority of her life career, she just sticks with your shoes and that's what makes it so fascinating. I'm not a multitasker. The fact that he can talk while he's making the point shoe means that he's probably done this forever and ever. A lot of dancers love him because he's pretty consistent. The platform of the shoe is quite broad. So if the dancer really likes a flat, wider platform, they typically like the crown maker. It's quite labor intensive. You can see how they have to stretch the satin and the materials onto the last and everything has to be pretty tight. How many could you do in a day? I'll do 40 pairs a day. 40. Yeah. I'm sorry, 40 pairs a day. That's insane. I'm sure everyone has a different quota, but Crown Maker makes 40 pairs. Okay, so you see how they're just smearing the glue on the point shoe. Nothing is measured, and they're just putting all the materials on top of each other. The side, the length of the back, the pitch of the platform, the width of the platform, the strength of the block. Whereas if you manufactured point shoes in the way that you might other shoes, you would not have those options. Right. I have my own certain way and yeah. then I'll perfect it for the dancer what she needs and then if there's something what she don't like and then I'll change it to accommodate her sort of thing and then once you've done her several times and then you know then you do it without thinking and yeah. then she knows without you having to worry about it and then you just build up that sort of relationship with them. 
as you see, they've got your name on. So everyone's name is written on the point shoe. So when you get a custom point shoe like this, they have the date and the name of the dancer on there. It's easy to keep track when the shoe was made and which batch it came from. That was the Freed factory. This is another factory from Russia that actually does a lot of white labeling all around the world. So if you've heard of Russian point, R-Class, Energetics, it all comes out of this factory. They do an excellent job with their manufacturing. The ASMR. Life of any point shoe model begins from designing and creation of the shoe lasts from the development of the point parts, outer sole, inner sole, and upper part. The last is what the point shoe is made on top of. And it's not just a generic last, like every point shoe company has like a different shape. Some lasts are going to be wider across the metatarsal, lower in the crown. Some point shoes are going to be a little bit narrower and higher in the crown. So it just depends on who they're targeting. Kind of like if you really like Adidas over Nikes, that probably means that you like that last a little bit more. Wow, that was gorgeous. Okay, so they're making the upper now. Beautiful satin. And another thing that is different from company to company is the materials that they use. And every company just uses a different type of glue. How it breaks down, it all matters stamping out the materials. Ooh, okay, so these are all of the different shank stamps. So they use this stamp to kind of print out all of the different outsoles. Inner sole is made of special shoe board of different thicknesses and brands. So the thicker it is, the harder it's going to be and the higher up you will be from the floor. So some people want a really flat, flat sole. So you want a thinner one and some people don't mind and they want something more supportive, so you go with a thicker inner sole. And the inner sole is what gives you the support. The outsole is really just a piece of leather that goes on the outside of your point shoes. So you see all those last lining up. So this is assembling all of the different parts that you just saw being stamped out. And depending on how tight you make the point shoes too, that also makes a huge difference. If they are really pulling the materials too tight, it could actually affect how you are pulled back or pushed forward in the shoe. If it's too tight, it might just kind of like press into your foot too much. Okay, so hard box is made of bread flour and starch with special unique technology in the factory. So the glue is going to be proprietary. They use all natural materials. So this is very, very traditional how this is made. Mr. Grishko always jokes around that his materials are so natural that you can eat your point shoe. <laughs> it's not too far off. Oh, see, I love the turn shoe method. It's so satisfying when you finally go in that step. Oh, each craftsman stamps a shoe he produces with his own unique stamp. It ensures his personal liability for assembling quality. There's a responsibility there. I wanna know how many calories you burn every day by making point shoes. <laughs> See how flat and lovely this is? Now that your point shoes are nice and assembled, they dry. You go into a furnace, I always joke that it's cooking, but it's just drying in like a very hot area. Drying all the shoes are subject to quality control, good quality products are packed. So a lot of the point shoes that are rejects, they don't pass the quality test. They get sold on a highly discounted rate in local markets in Russia. Beautiful, stunning. That was the point shoe factories around the world. Oh my gosh, please invite me to one of these factories because I wanna go so bad. If you guys see anything else that comes out, anything about point shoes that I possibly have not seen, please tag us and let us know. I'll see you guys later.